all right so now we can move on to disassemble the engine so first I'll remove the intake manifold and for that we have two M5 screws Make sure that the manifold is in good shape and condition, it's not cracked or chipped. Then we will remove the engine cover. So I'll remove all the screws on the flywheel side of the engine cover. Then I'll remove the pull start. Now the cord on my pull start is a bit loose and I have a replacement for that. Here we can see the flywheel and the, and the ignition coil. To remove the top engine cover, we need to remove this T5 screw over here. Next, I'll remove the ignition coil. And once you remove the screws for this ignition coil, inspect that and check if the switch and wires are in good shape. And you'll also have these two plastic spacers. Make sure not to lose them because these are essential for maintaining the gap and position for the ignition coil and flywheel in order to generate the spark. Alright, next. I'll remove the exhaust. Now to disassemble the engine from here onwards, we need two essential tools for this, the piston stopper and the flywheel puller. Without these tools, it's almost impossible to take the engine apart safely. So the piston stopper and the flywheel puller are a must have for this. So first I'll install the piston stopper on the cylinder head. And gently rotate the flywheel to make sure that it locks up with the piston stopper. Now you'll also need an M6 hex driver because the bolts on the flywheel puller are M6. And most of the screws on the Baja 5P are M5. So you might have to purchase a M6 size Allen tool set. So first I'll remove the clutch. And as you can see that we have two Torx 5 screws on the clutch which hold it in place. Now these have a heavy amount of thread lock on them. So I'll heat the screws to remove them easily and safely without stripping them. And once the crankshaft is locked in, we can remove the screws that hold the clutch in place. And these screws have these circular shims or washers you can see and they're directional so whenever you are installing them make sure that they're installed in the correct orientation inspect the clutch make sure it's in good shape 
most likely the spring on the clutch will be worn out or it may not extend as the clutch rotates so you may need to replace the spring next we will remove the clutch mount or the clutch plate you can call it And to remove this, we will have to use the flywheel puller. And depending on what type of flywheel puller you have, you may need to use a tiny bolt like this so that when you are rotating the middle screw on the flywheel puller, it does not thread in and lock with the clutch mount itself. So I have inserted this screw in the center hole of the clutch mount. And when securing the flywheel puller, make sure that the outermost screws are screwed in evenly and also make sure that the screws don't touch the base of the clutch housing and the proper way of using the flywheel puller is the metal bar of the flywheel puller is seated just below the cap of the screws otherwise you won't get the leverage that we need to generate the pull or in order to extract the clutch carrier so make sure that the screw cap is resting on the metal bar of the flywheel puller otherwise you will just keep on rotating the center screw and and you won't be able to remove the clutch plate so with the m6 hex tool i'll remove the clutch mount and you will have to apply a lot of pressure for this So once you hear that pop, you can easily remove the clutch mount and remove the flywheel puller. Inspect the clutch mount. If you decide to use a tiny bolt like this, to remove it, just use the M6 bolt and place it on the back side and just tap it a few times and it should fall off next we will remove the flywheel so for that use the spark plug wrench with the 12 millimeter hex end and remove the center nut you may need to heat this as well because it does have some amount of thread lock on it Now after removing the center nut, we will again use the flywheel puller for this and just as before, rotate the outermost screws evenly. And then I'll begin to torque the center screw. Now again you'll have to apply a lot of pressure to remove the flywheel. Here on the crankshaft we will have a small key and this key will basically engage the flywheel with the crankshaft. Make sure you don't lose this. Now we can disassemble the clutch housing or the clutch side of the engine. So with the T5 wrench we can remove the Torx 5 screws
and the clutch housing should be separated quite easily. Here we can see the rubber seal that's in place and we do have four more screws on the other end of the engine where we have the flywheel. Remove these four screws as well. And to separate the cylinder head from the bottom half of the engine, we will remove the top two screws. And we can separate the top cylinder head. Inspect it and check if it's in good shape and condition. And here we have the piston. So these screws are a bit long compared to the clutch side. Now bottom half of the crankcase is actually held in place with a rubber sealant from the factory. So to separate this I'll use a tool set like this and, and gently tap it with another tool set. and we should be able to separate it here we have the crankshaft now to remove the rubber seal and the bearings there are various methods we need to remove the old casket We need to remove the C-clip which holds the piston rod in place. So with the tweezer we can gently remove the C-clip. And then remove the connecting rod which is in the center of the piston. Now I won't take apart the main crankshaft itself because you either replace this with a new one or don't mess around with this at all. The 26cc piston that I have is more or less new so I'll reuse this. And the rubber seals that we have are going to be damaged when we remove it so there's no chance of reusing them and same goes with the bearings so with the flathead screwdriver you can remove the rubber seal easily especially on the flywheel side And to remove the bearing on the flywheel side of the crankcase, you can either use a socket if you have or use a flathead screwdriver and hammer it and the bearing should fall off. If you want to avoid the hammering process, you can also place the crankcase in a microwave oven or a heating oven and 
heat it for about 15 to 20 minutes at 250 to 200 degrees celsius Now to remove the rubber seal and the bearing on the clutch side of the crankcase we have to be a bit careful because inside we have a retaining clip and you don't want to damage it. Now on the clutch side of the crankcase we will first remove the bearing and with a flathead screwdriver I'll gently tap the inner part of the bearing. So once the bearing is out, here we can see the center clip and this clip will basically help the bearing from binding onto the rubber seal. And then to remove the rubber seal, use the flathead screwdriver and tap it. Here I have the replacement rubber seals and bearings with me which I will be installing. So now our engine is completely disassembled and I will clean this up and move on to the assembly part in the next video.